if x and y are jointly distributed discrete random variables and we just want to predict x there's sort of two ways we could do it we could do it if we're given information about y and we could do it also if we're not given information about y let's compare and contrast those two different possibilities so let's let x and y be discrete random variables with joint probability mass function f of x and y. So one thing we can get from f of x, y is what we call the marginal Actually, I guess we use P for, for mass functions rather than little f. One thing we can get from P of x, y is the marginal probability mass function. which is what we get by summing PXY over all possible values of Y. And this tells us the probability that X equals some value little x. So that corresponds to wanting to predict the random variable capital X without having any information about what happened with Y. So in the, pro the joint probability mass function, we have an opinion about how x and y are related. And uh, maybe we think that there's some values that, that can't happen simultaneously for x and y, and there's other ones that are likely. So we have an opinion about how x and y are related. But if, let's say, two events happen, we don't know what happened with y, and we're trying to predict x, then, then this is the function that tells us what our opinion of having different values of x is. Another thing we can get from this probability mass function is what's written in the book as probability, the probability mass function for x given y and the values little x and little y are written here with a vertical bar between them and this is the probability that capital X equals little x given that capital Y equals little y So this is, um, we could convert, we could write this as an expression for our opinion of x given a specific outcome of y. So whenever we know that y takes the value little y, what does that say about opinion, about our opinion of what's going to happen to, to capital X? So the formula is just by definition the probability that x equals little x and y equals little y over the probability that y equals little y, just by the, the definition of conditional probability. So that is our mass function over 
the marginal mass function for y. Now if we look at this function, this has x's in it and it has y's in it. That's because we, we want a formula that tells us, given a specific outcome of y, whatever that outcome is, we're going to plug it in for y. How do we feel about capital X taking certain values, like, like little x? So since this is a function of two variables, I think it would make sense to write this as x comma y. It's a function of two variables. Any function of two variables, we put comma between them. But in the book, I guess this vertical bar is supposed to remind us that the value we're putting in for y is something we already know, and the value we're putting for x is something we're wondering about. So this is the given value for y. And this is a value we are wondering about. So let's do an example. Let's roll a pair of dice. And let, let, let's let x be the minimum number rolled and y be the maximum number rolled. find an expression for uh, as nice an expression as we can for the probability of getting a certain minimum given a certain maximum. So to do this Let's write some probabilities, right? We'll write some possible outcomes, I mean, and we'll compute probabilities from that. So we're going to be given the maximum number rolled. So if, if y equals 1, if one is the maximum, then I guess the minimum is one also. It means we got double ones. If y equals two, we could have one and two in two different ways, or we could have two and two. If y equals three, we could have one and three in two different ways, two and three in two different ways, or double three. If y equals four, we could have 1 and 4 in two different ways, 2 and 4 in two different ways, 3 and 4 in two different ways, and 4 and 4, etc. Okay, so I think this list of outcomes is going to be enough to help us write down the formula. So if we're given the maximum, how many possibilities are there? There's one possibility if the maximum is one. There's three possibilities if the maximum is two. There's five possibilities if the maximum is three and seven possibilities if the maximum is four. 
So basically it's two times the maximum because we're going to pair with the maximum any number less than or equal to that except that when we pair a number equal to it we don't have two orderings. We have two orderings of 1, 2 but only one ordering of 2, 2. Two orderings of 1, 3 and 2, 3 but only one ordering of 3, 3. So the number of possibilities here is going to be 2 times little y minus 1. 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1. 2 times 2 minus 1 is 3. 2 times 3 minus 1 is 5. 2 times 4 minus 1 is 7. So 2 minus little 2y, 2 times little y minus 1 is definitely going to be the denominator. And then if the minimum is different from the maximum, we can see it two times. So the minimum is one, that comes up two times. The minimum is two, that comes up two times, etc. But if the minimum is the same as the maximum, we're only going to see it once. Because there's only one way to order one, one, or two, two, or three, three, or four, four, etc. So I think we're going to need two cases. We'll have 1 over 2y minus 1 and 2 over 2y minus, minus 1. One if x equals y and two if x is different from y. So to plug in particular numbers, let's say we'll plug in y equals 4. So the little number, the little y is 4 also. So the probability that the minimum is 1, given that the maximum 4, is 2 out of 7. probability that the minimum is 2 given that the maximum 4 again is 2 out of 7. And the probability that the minimum is 3 given that the maximum 4 is also 2 out of 7. But the probability that the max the minimum is 4 given that the maximum 4 maximum is 4 is only 1 out of 7. Now if we look at these probabilities we just got, 2 sevenths, 2 sevenths, 2 sevenths, and 1 seventh, they add up to 2, 4, 6 plus 1, 7 sevenths, they add up to 1. And that's not an accident, that always happens. So if we add up the conditional probabilities for any fixed value of y. I should probably write that first so I can write equals 1 here. So for a fixed value little y, if we sum these um, conditional probabilities over all values of x, we get 1. It's not hard to see why that's true. So the sum is we said that a formula for this is the probability that x equals little x and y equals little y over the probability that y equals little y. Now if we're summing over x, we can take this denominator out because it doesn't have any x's in it. So that's 1 over the probability that capital Y equals little y sum of 
probability that x equals little x and y equals little y. Summed over x. Now if we sum these joint probabilities over all x, we're just talking about the probability that kappa y equals little y. And since that is in the denominator, then we get 1. All right, let's do a different type of example now. Let's suppose that x and y are independent random variables. And they're both Poisson random variables. x is Poisson with parameter lambda 1, and y is Poisson with parameter lambda 2. Let's find the conditional probability that x equals k, given that the sum of x and y is n. And recall that by independence of x and y, x plus y is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So to find this conditional probability, the probability that x equals k given x plus y equals n is, well if x plus y equals n and x equals k, that tells us exactly what y is. It has to be n minus k. So the probability that x equals k given that y equals n minus k. Oh, I think I'm jumping the gun a little bit because I still have to say given that they sum to n. So let me write this first as the probability that x equals k and x plus y equals n over the probability that x plus y equals n. And now I can say that the top is the probability that x equals k and y equals n minus k over the probability that x plus y equals n. You know x and y are independent, so I can say this is the probability that x equals little x times the probability that y equals little y over the probability that their sum is n. Okay, now these are all Poisson random variables, x, y, and x plus y. So we can start putting in our, our formulas for probabilities. So we have lambda 1 to the x is k and y is n minus k. So we have lambda 1 to the k over k factorial e to the minus lambda 1 and then lambda 2 to the n minus k over n minus k factorial e to the minus lambda 2. That's the numerator. And then the denominator we have lambda 1 plus lambda 2 to the n e to the minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 all over n factorial. All right, in the numerator we've got e to the minus lambda 1 times e to the minus lambda 2, which is exactly what's in the denominator. So we can get rid of the exponentials. They'll just disappear completely. And then the lambdas don't exactly cancel out. What do we have? We have lambda 1 to the k, lambda 2 to the n minus k, 
over lambda 1 plus lambda 2 to the nth. And then the factorials are, we have an n factorial in the denominator of the denominator fraction, which puts it in the, the numerator of the numerator fraction. So we've got n factorial over k factorial, n minus k factorial. Let's just n choose k. And this looks a little bit like a binomial random variable because we'd have probability to the k times probability to the n minus k times n choose k. In fact, yeah, this is because if we write lambda 1 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2. And lambda 2 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2. That's 1, because it's lambda 1 plus lambda 2 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2. And these are both positive. So we've got two positive numbers that add to 1. So this is basically p and 1 minus p for some probability. So we do have, and we can break up this lambda 1 plus lambda 2 to the nth into lambda 1 plus lambda 2 to the kth times lambda 1 plus lambda 2 to the n minus kth. So if we write lambda 1 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2, all of this to the kth and lambda 2 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2, all of this to the n minus kth times n choose k, and that's the probability we want. So it looks like once we know the sum of x plus y, predicting x is just like predicting a binomial random variable. So x, given that x plus y equals n, is a binomial random variable with n trials and probability of success lambda 1 over lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So I guess this information, x plus y equals n, allows us to predict what x is going to be by a very familiar method. It turns out to be a, a binomial random variable once we have this information. The end.